All right, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. I want to talk to you tonight on the subject of the fall of man. The fall of man. And let me go ahead and give you the outline. Number one, the strategy. The strategy. Number two, the tragedy. And number three, the penalty. The penalty. The strategy, the uh, tragedy, and the penalty. You know, Genesis is the book of beginnings. Uh, we understand in Genesis that God created everything uh, that we see in six days. Uh, of course, we believe He literally spoke the world into existence as we know it. In Genesis 2, God made man and woman and breathed life into them, uh, making them human beings. Uh, the, uh, the place in which they were live, in which they lived was called the Garden of Eden. It was a perfect place, a land of beauty, utopia, of lush land and pure water. And God told Adam and Eve to take care of the garden there. There was only one rule, one rule. Isn't that amazing? One rule is all they had. And the rule was do not eat of the tree of good and evil. Uh, you can eat of any other tree freely, but uh, if you eat this particular tree, you will die. Uh, sounds easy enough. But then came Genesis 3. And let's look at the fall of man and the ever presence of temptations in our lives. So let's look at. Uh, the strategy first. Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And again, we know the serpent is Satan or, uh, you know, or the devil. Uh, either way is, is, is good there. Uh, cunning, kind of sneaky or deceitful would be the word there. And if you, and we don't have time to go back there. If I had more time, we would go back to Ezekiel uh, chapter 28. And we have to realize uh, that before Satan was Satan, he was Lucifer. Okay? And he was actually, if you'll read Ezekiel 28, uh, he was in charge of worship in heaven. Okay? He was created. Because uh, I, I have to disagree with people that say, said God made Satan Satan. Okay? He was an angel. He was Lucifer. And it was his choice, which we'll be talking about here in just a minute. All right? And it says, And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And, you know, the strategy that Satan always has, uh, he loves to make people doubt. And you can see the doubt in his voice and the doubt, uh, you know, uh, in talking to Eve. And the other thing he, he loves to do, and he did this with Jesus himself, if you remember in Matthew chapter 4, all right, he misquotes Scripture, okay? And this will be another issue that you will see in our text as, as we read down through here. Because it was clear, it was clear what uh, God told Adam and Eve. Verse 2, And the woman said to the serpent, and by the way, uh, you know, these folks that want to talk uh, uh, to, to spirits and to, uh, you know, and, and here's my point, folks. If you recognize it is an evil spirit, all right, I, I wouldn't even carry on a conversation uh, with them if I was you, okay? You, you're just asking for trouble there, all right? So, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. What did that verse show you? All right? Satan said one thing, and she added, though, or, nor you touch it. So it was extremely clear. All right? Eve knew what uh, God had told them. But yet, sometimes we listen to the wrong voice. Uh, sometimes we let our guards down. Uh, sometimes we think, ah, you know, maybe it's not that big a thing, okay? But I'm just telling you folks, uh, Satan is a liar, all right? He will lie to you. Uh, it doesn't, 
you know, it doesn't matter when, it doesn't matter whether, and, and folks, I, I'm not really into the little white lie connotation or quotation. All right, to me, a lie is a lie. And he is a liar. Matter of fact, hold your finger there and go to uh, John chapter 8. John 8, verse 44. Just one verse here. Jesus speaking says, you are, the fa- uh, you are of your father the devil, and the desires of the father you want to do. Okay, and, and again, the scribes and the Pharisees, they was always on Jesus Okay, they accused him of being Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies. They accused him of being, you know, so many things and, and just very, very ugly to Jesus. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand for the truth because there is no truth in him. And what he does, folks, and you know this, he, he says right is wrong and wrong is right. And, and first, the first murder, of course, was Cain and Abel. Then it says, and when he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own resources. Okay? That's his job. That's what he does. He lies. He lies to Christians and he lies to non-Christians. For he is a liar and the father of it. So we see the devil, uh, you know, tempting Eve. We see uh, him uh, making her doubt what what, uh, God truly has said. And, and again, you know, you just, you have to understand. And, and one thing I want you to know, folks, it's not a sin to be tempted. Okay? And people ask me, more than once they've asked me, when will we, you know, get temptation away from us? Let me tell you, when, after you take your last breath. Okay? You are going to be tempted, I mean, sometimes every day of your life. All right, let's look at verse 4. And the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. What is that? That's a big fat lie, folks. That is a lie. For God knows in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. What's he doing? He's misquoting God. And folks, I'm telling you, you can change one word of a sentence and it can be a lie. Just one word. Even people that quote the Bible sometimes, if they leave certain words out, it totally changes the meaning of the sentence. So when you are listening to preachers, you need to listen to everything that they say. All right? For God knows in the day, and and we know that was not what he said, and that's not what's going to happen. Their eyes were not open. I mean, you you could maybe say that in some way because they realized they were naked. But what he was promising them was not true. And you will be like God, knowing good from evil. See, Satan deceived Eve with his lies. And folks, we need to be sensitive. Uh, That's why it's very, very important that we know the Word of God. We need to know the Word of God so that we can know when he is misquoting God himself. James chapter 1, go with me if you would. James chapter 1. Just hold your finger there. James chapter 1. and Look in verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. What is that? Happy. Okay? Blessed. We know uh, the Beatitudes. All right? We're going to be tempted. And it's not a sin to be tempted. It is a sin to give in to temptation. But happy, blessed. And why, why are we not happy when we sin? One is because the Holy Spirit is inside of us and it's telling us, hey, what you just did was wrong. Okay? So that's that's a good thing. That that's a good sign, all right, that you're you're saved, that the Holy Spirit is inside of you. But it's not a sin to be tempted. All right? For when he is approved, he will he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. And we know that because we're saved. Okay, we're saved. Now here it is. Look at verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God by God. For God cannot, uh, cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Okay, so it, you know that if there is a temptation in front of you, it's coming from Satan. God doesn't do that. He tests you. Okay, he allows things to happen in your life, but he will not tempt you 
with sin. And folks, as Christians, we have to be able to know the difference. All right, Verse 14, but each, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. And here's the kicker. All right, Enticed literally means baited. Okay, I mean, if you went fishing and you decide to go fishing one day and you decide, well, today I'm not going to use any bait. You just throw a hook out there. Well, maybe reeling one in on a slim chance you might hook one all right, in the back or something. But what do we use? We use bait. And what does Satan use? He uses bait and he entices us to do wrong. Verse 15, Then when the desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is full grown, it uh, brings forth death. And again, death happened. Okay, When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, we already know that death came to mankind. So, we have to understand, Satan's goal is to get you to disobey God. That's what he wants. He tempts you. He gets you and, and wants you to doubt God. He wants you to question the Word of God. And folks, we need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. That's why prayer is so important. Okay, prayer is so important. Because Satan himself tempted Jesus. And three times he said, it is written. So prayer and meditation and, and reading your Bible and studying your Bible is a way that we can avoid uh, not temptation, but falling to temptation. So we see his strategy. Now let's look at the tragedy. Look at verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of his fruit and ate. So we see, again, the temptation there. Uh, and you, you can see the, the justification sometimes. All right, It was good for food. All right? Even though they had all kinds of fruit trees, all right, Satan tempts them in that way. Something that, that, that looks luscious. Something that looks good. And it was pleasant to the eyes. Good to see. Okay? When you look at fruit, all right, I, I don't know about you, but I love fresh peaches. Okay, I mean, I could pick one off of a tree. I, I, I mean, you should wash them, but I'm just telling you, I could eat a ton of those. It looks good. And the tree is desirable to make one wise. And here's where the manipulation comes in. Okay, and it's a thing. Again, this whole deal, folks, I'm telling you, Satan is the master of pride. Okay, I'm telling you, pride has hurt so many Christians. Pride has hurt Christians in, in their witness. All right? And, and he was baiting her and saying, if you want to be like God, okay? And folks, none of us can be like God. Okay? We can model Jesus, okay? But again, we're not perfect. We're not perfect. And he, he, he just bold-faced lied, and she took the bait. And it says... And she gave. Uh, she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. And I'm not going to debate all that going on. Bottom line: Adam is a man. Adam can decide for himself. Adam could have said no. You cannot blame that on Eve. Okay, we all are tempted. Uh, and and I will say this: a lot of times we are. I mean, we think we're just tempted in in our weaknesses. But folks, I'm telling you, he'll he'll hit you in your strengths too. He'll do anything to get you to sin and to disobey God. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. And again, folks, uh, it wasn't an enlightenment. It was a fall. Okay, Before, hey, they were naked and never thought anything about it. And, I, I, and again, folks, I don't think we can understand. It's kind of like trying to describe heaven. It's just impossible to describe and the garden of eden was a perfect place but when they ate of the fruit they they figured out they were naked they knew it was and they made themselves coverings isaiah 14 go with me if you would isaiah 14 isaiah 14 verse 12 the fall of lucifer is what this is entitled how you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, 
the son of the morning. And again, I'm just telling you folks, he was created a good thing. He was to lead worship. And it says, uh, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, and, and I'm just telling you, here's the pride statements. If you look down through there, there's seven pride statements. I, all right? And folks, I am telling you, that's one of the things that's wrong with our world. It's all about me. It's all about, you know, it's not that we don't care about others, but we care about ourselves first. And it's like blessed and happiness, joy. If you want true joy in your life, you have to put Jesus first. You put others second. And you put yourself last. And, and that's totally opposite of what the world tells us to do. They tell it, it's okay. If you want something, go and take it. If, if, if you have to lie, if you have to cheat, if you have to hurt somebody, if you have to you know, sell out to somebody, that doesn't matter. Get what you want. And folks, that's the exact thing that got Satan kicked out of heaven. For you said in your heart, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt, throne, exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation. What is he saying? I want to be worshipped. Okay, I want to be worshipped. And, and still, folks, I'm talking even our athletes and our stars and all that. All right, I mean, you, you saw when Michael Jordan was in his prime, I want to be like Mike. Well, I got news for you, folks. My name is Mike, and don't, you don't want to be like Mike, okay? What we should say is, I want to be like Jesus. All right? I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above in the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, yet you shall be brought down to Shiloh and to the lowest depths of the pit. And also, if you just want another reference of him getting kicked out of heaven, we don't have time to go there, but Revelation chapter 12, uh, it speaks of that, and it speaks of one-third of the angels going with Lucifer or Satan. And, and of course, those are the demonic spirits uh, that are running around in this world. So we see the tragedy here. And folks, I'm telling you, from that first bite, everything changed okay and there is no place on earth folks i don't care where you go there is no place on earth like the garden of Eve, eden it was a perfect utopia it was a perfect place and sin came into the world look at romans 5 romans chapter 5 romans 5 Verse 18, Romans 5, 18. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men. And again, Adam was that man, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act. Now, notice the capital M there, okay? That is Jesus Christ. That is deity. Through one man's righteousness, the act of the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification. All right? When Adam fell, folks, we all fell. We all got a sin, sin nature. Okay? We got a sin nature. And when you get saved, your sin nature is not erased. I wish that was true. I wish he could just take every evil thought, every evil deed, everything, erase it all. But we still have a sin nature. We do. And, and Paul speaks about that. We fight our flesh. Verse 19, For as... By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Folks, it's the righteousness of God. All right, That's what salvation is. We can't be good enough. We can't clean up enough. We can't go to church enough. We can't read the Bible enough. We can't give enough All right, to be righteous. All right, Our righteousness is found in Jesus Christ. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. And again, the law was just a plumb line, okay? The law, it, it, it's just, it was the, 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 the rule. It was the bar set, okay? And, and we knew that we were short of the glory of God. We knew that we are all sinners. I will say this, 
I, I, I couldn't tell you how many times over 40 years I presented the gospel, but I have never once had somebody say, I've never sinned, ever. Okay? We are all sinners, and even lost people uh, realize that. But where sin abound, I love this, grace abounded much more. Folks, you can't get too bad. You can't get too far away from God. God will save anyone that will come to Him in, in, in humility and in confession of sin, so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, folks, I'm telling you, uh, you know, even in that, you know, when, when they were talking about, you know, uh, covering themselves up and, and doing that, folks, they knew they had sinned. There was no doubt in it. But I thank God that He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, uh, to die on the cross so that we can have uh, salvation. So we see the strategy, we see the tragedy, which really is the fall of man. Okay, and, and folks, you can't blame it on Adam. Okay, I've heard this, you know, you know, I, I'm, I heard a guy say one time, I'm still mad at Adam. <laughs> folks, if you'd, have, you'd been there, you'd have probably done the same thing, okay? You would have. So the third thing we want to see is the penalty. The penalty. Look back, look at Verse 8, And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam said, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. And this just, I, I, I laugh at this. Okay, you're going to hide from God. Okay, I'm telling you, bushes and trees are not going to get it. Verse 9, Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? And again, I, I really believe God has a sense of humor because he knew exactly where they were. He just wanted them to acknowledge that they were hiding. They were hiding. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. He had talked to God before. Okay? I mean, he was the one naming the animals. All right? Just, just think about all that. All right? And, and you have to understand, uh, with all that was going on, uh, it, it wasn't that he didn't recognize the voice. It was that he had changed. And folks, I, I want you to know that sin will change you. All right? It will. It'll give you a different point of view. And the whole thing with this, folks, in temptation is we cannot ever make peace with sin. We cannot ever justify sin. We can not ever say, I, I hear this, well, it's not that bad a sin. I've heard people say that. Folks, all sin is bad. All sin is. I heard your voice, and he had an emotion that he had never felt before. I was afraid. And right then, he condemned himself, folks. Why? Because he was never afraid before that. And he knew for the first time, one, he was in trouble. <laughs> Number two, he had Fear. He had fear. Because I was naked and hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? And again, God is just trying to get him to confess. Just trying to get him to say. And folks, it, it's so hard to say sometimes, but it needs to be said, folks. I was wrong. I am sorry, God. Please forgive me. Confession is so good. For the soul. Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should eat? Now notice the three things that have come into play here that had never been in play. And folks, Satan uses these three things. The first thing that came into play was realizing he was naked. It was shame. Satan will shame you. Once he gets you and you sin, then he starts in on you. I thought you were a Christian. Why did you do that? And, and he just shames you. The second thing I mentioned already is fear. Okay, is fear. He instills fear in you. Sometimes fear, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people, I, folks, I am telling you, I can name the, the, as many people. There are a lot of people that live in fear. And if you live in fear, you are living exactly where Satan wants you to live. Okay, we should be afraid of nothing according to the Word of God. And then the third thing, and this is the one that keeps us 
you know, kind of beat down. And the third thing he brought into our lives was guilt. Okay, guilt? Yes. And, and folks, you have to understand, there's true guilt and there's false guilt. Okay, true guilt is conviction of the Holy Spirit. False guilt is from Satan. And folks, I've done it, I've sinned, and then I've asked God to forgive me that night. Then in the middle of the night, I wake up and I ask God to forgive me again. And then I wake up the next day and I ask God to forgive me again. Am I the only one that does that? You don't have to show your hand, but I'm just saying. I do. Why? Because Satan wants to throw it back up in your face so that you won't live a victorious life. Okay, no, folks, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When He forgives, all right, it is done. Matter of fact, in salvation, if you read the Word in Psalm, our sins are erased as far as the east is from the west. Blank wall. He erases them all. That's why it's so, so important to ask us those three questions that I've said and I've said and I've said. Am I right with God every night, every night? Am I right with my family? Am I right with my fellow man? And folks, I'm telling you, if you will confess, and not just confess, true confession results in repentance. God, I am sorry. And, and folks, I'm telling you, so many people live under the burden of grief. You know, the, the grief and guilt. Excuse me. Burden of guilt, which produces grief in their life. Okay, and then Satan, what he'll do? He said, you know, you'll you, you'll say something to Satan, or or you'll you'll be talking, but you'll hear, you know, that that grief and that that guilt and all that going on. I'm telling you, and you know what he says? You're right. You are a sorry Christian, and he'll just beat you down and beat you down. Verse twelve. Then the man said to the woman, said Then the man said, the woman whom you gave me to be with me. She gave me the tree, and I ate. What is it? Now we play the blame game. Okay? Hey, I was doing all right. You know, I named the animals, and we were all cool, and then you gave me the woman. All right? And then the Lord said to the woman, what is, what is this you have done? And the woman said, well, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. So what does she do? She blames the serpent. Folks, the bottom line is they gave in to temptation. Okay? Folks, we have to fight it every day of our lives. Every day of our lives. I can honestly say, I don't think there's not a day that goes by that a Christian is not tempted by something. Tempted. And what we have to learn to say is, no. All right? No. No to temptation. Don't dwell on it. Don't, and, and don't justify it. Don't think about it. If you know it's a sin, say no. Say no. It's kind of like what I do with the remote. I, I love football. I love sports. But I'm just telling you, there's commercials, you know, all kinds of commercials. And as soon as I see it, man, I either change the channel or I just turn the TV off. All right? You have to say no to temptation. Romans 5. Let's, let's finish this up. Romans 5. Romans 5. There you go. I'll get there in a second. Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, I don't know a person in here that doesn't want the peace of God in their life. And to have the peace of God in your life, we have to be confessed up. Okay, don't let it pile up. Don't go at night without uh, you know, looking at your life. Okay, God, what did we do today? And folks, I am telling you, if you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, He will tell you every little detail. Okay? He doesn't miss any sin. Okay? You can't just say, God, forgive me of all my sin today. Or, or, or have the attitude, I'm tired. I'm tired. Lord, just forgive me. Whatever I did. Folks, we can't have that kind of attitude. Okay? We cannot. We can have the peace of God in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord through whom we have access by faith to this grace, which we stand. Okay, We have access to grace. Okay, We got God's grace when we were saved. And folks, we need God's grace every day of our lives. We need His grace and we need His mercy. Okay, 
And it says, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And folks, the hope is not a, well, I hope so. It drives me crazy when I ask somebody, if you were to die today, you, you, would you go to heaven? And they say, I hope so. That drives me nuts. And it's just like saying, sick them to a bulldog. <laughs> All right. We, you, just, you just said, of course, the first thing I do is quote First John 5.13. These things are written that you may know that you have eternal life. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Folks, we are going to mess up. We're not perfect. I'm not trying to excuse. I'm not trying to give you a pass. Okay? But we will mess up. But when we mess up, be quick to repent. Quick. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So what do we have? Folks, I'm telling you, don't let Satan just keep beating you down and beating you down. I hope you realize God's love is unconditional. Okay, he'll take you back. He loves you. All right, he wants you happy. He wants you to have peace in your life. But we can't make peace with sin and have the peace of God in our life. It just doesn't work like that. So he has, we have God and His love poured out on us. And the other thing, folks, is we have the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is that dunamis, that power, that Acts chapter 2 power that came down in a powerful way. And do you know what that means? It means we don't have to sin. I didn't say we wouldn't sin. I'm saying we don't have to sin because if we are in tune and in good fellowship with God, we know when we sin. There is no doubt in our lives we know that we sin because the Holy Spirit says, ooh, Mike, you shouldn't have said that. Ooh, you shouldn't have done that. I mean, he don't let up, okay? I don't have to. I can never say. I look at something and think, well, I wonder if I sinned or not. I know whether I sin or not. It's just whether we will admit that we sin. And you know what that comes back to, what we talked about earlier? The sin of pride. We need to admit it, and we need to quit it. Poured out on our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Folks, you don't have to sin. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel good. I don't have to sin. I choose to sin. And folks, I need to quit listening to the wrong voice. I need to... Focus on Jesus Christ. And when the Holy Spirit tells me, man, you've got to get this right, get it right. Father, thank You. Thank You, Lord. And, and we know Satan's strategy is always sin. Always. And Lord, I know that sin breaks our fellowship with God, not a relationship. We will all be, always be uh, children of God. And God, I, I just pray, I don't know why, but tonight the, the word guilt is just... Uh, just really strong in my head, Lord. Satan just beats us down and beats us down. And God, I, I pray that uh, when we have true guilt, when we have conviction, true guilt is conviction of the Holy Spirit, that we will take care of business and we'll take care of that. But God, I do know there are people that just live under the burden of guilt. And God, I pray even tonight, if there's just one here tonight that is just living under that burden, that, God, I pray that tonight you would just set them free. God, we are children of a king. We are children of God. And, God, I pray that we understand that, Lord, you're, you're, you're just like a father. You are our father. And, Lord, I know my father disciplined me, and I know probably I didn't get disciplined enough. But, God, you do it, and my dad did it because he loves us. And he wants what's best for us. So, God, I pray is... Satan shows up, and he is going to show up. He is going to show up. Sometimes it's in family. Sometimes it's in friends. Sometimes it's on the job. Sometimes it's on a ball field. When he shows up, God, I pray that we would just say no to temptation and yes to Jesus. God, thank you that uh, even though we fail, God, we are going to be victors. God, you wrote the last chapter. You have the last say. And God, we will go to heaven. And 
Lord, when I think of this, I just want to shout, we will go to where there's no temptation. None. We're going to a perfect place. And God, we thank you for that. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.